Welcome to my organizational behavior playlist. Today I will be discussing about groups in organization. So let's see first of all the question that can be asked in the examination. Discuss in detail different types of groups in organization. The weightage can be 7 marks. So let's see types of groups in organization. So let's start with the introduction of the group. It is the arrangement of the individuals who have something in common. So it is actually the arrangement of the individuals who have something in common. That can be the common hobby, common interest, common ambitions, etc. Examples. Either they possess a similar trait. That means distinguishing quality or falls into the same situations. This association becomes a temporary identity of the individuals who form it. Also, every group has its norms, goals, composition and criteria. We can categorize the groups into two major classes according to the purpose it serves. Here you can see, these are actually the two major classes of the group, that is the formal group and informal group. Whether it is for fulfilling an organizational objective or for meeting the self-interest of the members. Now let's start with the first one, formal group. When people collaborate to attain the organizational goals or objectives, they are said to form a formal group. So very simple, when people collaborate to attain the organizational goals or the organizational objectives, they are said to form a formal group. This group is defined by the organizational structure. Because of here you can see, when the people collaborate to attain the organizational goals, that's why this group is defined by the organizational structure. After planning, organizations group the activities and put those under a formal structure, deciding their goals and objectives and strategies to achieve the same. So, after planning the different activities, organization group these activities and put those under a formal structure with certain goals and objectives. Formal group members report to their superiors and interact with each other to achieve the common goals. For example, the finance group works under the chief financial officer at any organization. So this is called as formal group. Now let's see the brief idea about the informal group. Informal groups are formed within a formal organization structure. Informal group members primarily meet the social or affiliation needs sharing their common interests. So keep in mind in the formal group team member focuses on the organizational objectives. Whereas in case of informal groups, the team member focuses on their common interests. Thus, informal groups are not organizationally determined. The members themselves make such groups to fulfill their needs for social interaction. These groups are formed with friendships and common interests. For example, your workplace might have a group of people who get together during the lunch hour that is called as informal group because of that group is not actually structured by the organization or is not designed by the organization. Now let's see one by one these different groups that are considered under formal groups. So let's start from the first one command group. It is a group consisting of individuals who report directly to the manager. 
that's why it is called as command group this is a formal group determined by the organization's hierarchical chart and composed of the individuals that report to a particular manager for example the manager of training has a command group of his employees that is called as the training group so for the command group you should remember that it is actually a group consisting of individuals who report directly to the manager now the next one task group task groups are also organizationally determined but it is a temporary group representing the employees who are working together to complete a job task or particular project so keep in mind that previously we have discussed about the command group so command group is also organizationally determined task group is also organizationally determined but it is a temporary group representing the employees who are working together to complete a certain job or a certain task or a particular project however a task group's boundary are not limited to its immediate hierarchical superior that means particularly task group anyone can be the member of that task group that is actually not depend on the organizational structure for example if a problem arises which involves many departments a task force made up of representatives from each of the affected departments so the one member can be from the r&d one member can be from the marketing management and one member from the finance manager also in such case task group might be formed to examine the problem and suggest solutions now the next one committee to achieve results organizations often form committees drawing members from various formal groups they are also set up for some special projects these can be permanent such as planning committee or a budget committee a committee can also be temporary such as a special task force which is set up for a particular purpose and is disbanded when the purpose is achieved so keep in mind committee can be the temporary or can be the permanent if the special task force which is set up for a particular purpose only and is disbanded when the purpose is achieved then that type of the committee is considered as a temporary committee here you can see the example of the permanent committee like planning committee or a budget committee next for example the committee constitute to elect the president of the company is temporary and is adjourned after the election so this is a very simple example you can understand the concept of the committee but this committee is actually the temporary committee one more example to ensure better transparency and accuracy in purchase departments or you can say purchase decisions various members drawn from the user sections such as finance marketing hr etc may represent a tender purchase committee in an organization so to ensure the better transparency and accuracy sometimes the committee will form and that is considered a tender purchase committee now the different groups from the informal group so once again see the concept of the informal group when the individuals associate with one another to solve their common interests or self satisfaction the group is known as informal group so keep in mind that in the formal group the team member will focus on the objectives of the organization only whereas in case of the informal group their interest is self satisfaction some of the most common informal groups are interest group here you can see 
next friendship group next clicks next sub clicks and at last sales classification of groups or simply you can say sales groups now let's see one by one start from the interest group so name itself indicate the individuals who join hands for a common purpose related to self interest create an interest group people who may or may not be aligned into common command or task groups may affiliate to attain a specific objective with which each is concerned for example the employees who group together to pressurize the management for providing transportation facility so here you can see this transportation facility is actually the common interest of the employee that is actually not the objective or the goal of the organization next friendship groups the group which is formed as a result of personal choice by the individuals who are already familiar and feel comfortable with one another is called a friendship group a friendship group includes close friends or relations these groups arise because members know each other very well before joining the organization or it can be after joining the organization also in the initial stages they recognize each other only these social alliances which frequently extend outside work situation can be based on similar age or for holding similar political views or for having the same hobbies etc next one clicks in a workplace few colleagues join hands to form a small group usually with two or six members only to share ideas and thoughts on their mutual interests is known as click a small group of people with the same interests who do not want others to join their group especially for the click next one sub clicks this group consists of some members of a clique inside the organization along with the person outside the organization those are called as non employees also so in the sub cliques some members are actually from the clique and some members are actually outside of the organization so those are considered as non employees the members of the cliques join these outsider that means non employees due to their recognitions here non employees who are associated with the members of the cliques also such groups are regarded as partially external to the organization because of the some members are actually non employees of the organization that's why it is called as partially external now the last one sales group on the basis of the pressure tactics adopted by the groups lr sales identified four kinds of groups in the organizations which are discussed below first apathetic groups second irritic groups third strategic groups and at last fourth one conservative groups so these last groups again divided in four groups so let's see briefly these four groups first apathetic groups the leader does not pressurize the members usually it is formed by lower level workers who are unskilled and work on low wages so usually these apathetic groups is actually formed by the lower level workers who are unskilled and work on low wages next irritating groups 
when the people belonging to a group gets enraged quickly and similarly calms down they are said to be in an erratic groups so this is the special characteristics of the team members in the erratic groups the people belonging to a group gets enraged quickly as well as similarly calm down quickly such a group comprises of semi skilled workers so keep in mind in the apathetic groups the persons are actually unskilled whereas in erratic groups the persons are actually semi skilled workers next strategic groups it includes skilled workers who hold various job positions to execute the independent technological tasks so once again very important point for the apathetic groups the persons are actually unskilled in erratic groups persons are actually semi skilled whereas in strategic groups the persons or you can say team members are actually skilled workers who hold various job positions to execute the independent technological task these members have the skills of systematically applying pressure on the management and the other groups by framing a suitable strategy last one conservative groups the group which comprises of the stable and highly skilled individuals or professionals who have extreme powers to regulate the functioning of the organization is called a conservative group so keep in mind conservative group having highly skilled team members if you have any question then write in the comment box i will be back thanks my dear friends for watching this video press the like button to appreciate it